Hello, it's Kelly Lee James here, physiotherapist, yoga teacher and designer of the butterfly. What I'm going to be looking at in this video today is the mechanics of a sitting posture, particularly with respect to sitting on the floor. Now, when we talk about posture, we often refer to the pelvis as the foundation of posture. And this is because it's the position of the pelvis that largely determines the shape of the spine. So when we talk about the pelvis, what we're talking about is the pelvic bowl here, which is made up of our two hip bones. We have a left and a right here. They join at the front in, in the pubic bone area. And then coming in around the back, they articulate with the sacrum triangular bone at the base of the spine there. So where is your own pelvis? Let's have a look at that first four. Obvious as it might sound, let's just go ahead and have a look at it. So if I put my hands on top of my hips, I'm on top of these very large iliac crests here, okay? And we can nearly all find the top of our hips. Then if I let my hands come down, what I'm, and I connect with some bone down here, I'm now on the pubic bone, okay? So that's where the iliac bones meet at the front here. And then if I take my hands back onto the top of my head and let my thumbs meet in the midline, then I'm right down on the bottom of my spine, probably on about the fourth lumbar vertebrae. So there are five vertebrae in the lumbar spine. And I'm probably going to be on about the fourth one there. And if I keep my thumbs there and turn my hand, you will see that I've made a diamond shape in there. And that diamond shape is pretty much a drawing like this of my, let's bring that up a little bit closer. So what I've got is my hands are going to be over the sacroiliac joints. And then what we'll see is that diamond shape in there was coming over the sacrum. It's quite nice to just be able to really get these reference points in our body, it, it's helpful. But knowing where our pelvis is, doesn't tell us what position our pelvis is in. So, the um, joints at the pubic bone at the front, so this, is, this joint doesn't really move very much. It's held together by one of the strongest, shortest ligaments in the body. I'm gonna come right up to the camera so that you can see it there. So in here, this is um, a kind of little articular disc and it's very strong ligaments in here. And what will happen is in um, women who are pregnant, the ligaments will loosen to just allow a little bit of a widening of this joint. But this doesn't happen in, um, for, for most of us. And then you'll also see in here the sacroiliac joints. These are absolutely huge joints also held together by some of the strongest ligaments in the body. And you can see that the wedge, um, the wedge shape there of the sacrum Actually, it's pretty much like a, a cornerstone um, in, uh, in architecture, you know, the way that it really nestles into the two hip bones there. But look, when we come into sitting, we sit on the sit bones, which are at the base of our pelvic bones. And you can see how large those rockers are. And I tend to think of these as like the rockers on the bottom of a rocking chair. And what can happen is we can, depending on where we sit, that is what will determine the, where the, the shape of the pelvis and therefore the shape of the spine. So if we sit on the back of the sit bones, then some, one particular thing will happen. I'm going to demonstrate this in a minute. And it will be different to if we sit on the front of the sit bone. So we have this apex of the curve here. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore where you tend to sit, my eye might, might sit, um, 
in relation to the apex. Because what we're looking for in to sit really well is to sit just forwards of the apex of the sitting bone. So before we do any of that though, what we're going to do is look at some fairly obvious things which help us even even more clearly if you'd like to determine where our posture might be. So I'm coming into an unfamiliar sitting posture for me. I'm going to sit not on the block and I do need a block. So I'm going to sit not on the block and I'm also going to sit with my legs crossed in, uh, in across the shins rather than at the ankles which is where I normally like to cross them. So already I know that my posture has changed and if I come into the side view you can then see the shape of my spine more clearly. So the first thing we're going to look at is where the knees are in relation to the floor. So if I go through this and you might, might want to go through it alongside with me, you might also want to do it where you've got a mirror. And even better if you've got a hand mirror so that what you can be doing is looking at your profile. So having a look at where your knees are in relation to the floor. So at this point, I'm not trying to change anything. We're just noticing what is. And then we see where the knees are in relation to the hips. So you can see that my knees are quite high off the floor and my knees are also substantially higher than my hips. So these two things in themselves will tell me that the chances are my pelvis will have rolled in this position and that I will be sitting on the back of the rocker here. So behind the apex. Then if we ignore the pelvis for a moment and we go up to the lumbar spine. Now we have three natural curves in the spine. And in the lumbar spine, it's a backward facing curve. And that's called a lordosis. Sometimes people think a lordosis is um, uh, an overarch in the back, but actually a lordosis refers to that natural backward facing curve. And only if it's an overarch um, or when it's an overarch, we then call it a hyper lordosis. Then in the middle part of the back, it tends to be a forward facing curve, or you get someone um, like me with a very long spine and I'm quite flattened in my thoracic spine. And then up at the neck, we have another backward facing curve. So if we start from the base, you'll see that I've lost my natural um, lumbar lordosis there. I've come out of uh, that into not only uh, a sort of fairly flattened lumbar spine, but when I put my hand on it, I can actually feel that I've come into a little bit of a forward um, facing curve there. So if I exaggerate it, that's what I would look like. But you can see that there's not a lot of extra movement happening down there in my lumbar spine. I have tend um, to always take that flexion up in my thoracic spine. And you'll see that it's happening more at the top of my thoracic spine. Now, if I then want to look at the horizon, I've got to lift my chin up because I'm fairly fixed all here in order to get my gaze up there. So I'm now really shortening through the back of my neck. Now, the position of the spine there will also tell me that I've gone into a, a roll backwards on my pelvis. I'm gonna show you why this is. So I'm gonna come back up to the camera there. At the base of the spine, we have the sacrum here. And as we looked at before, the sacrum attaches onto the iliac um, bones on either side at the sacroiliac joints. Now, at these joints, there's only a very small amount of movement. We refer to this as joint play in physiotherapy. And when the whole spine comes into this rounded posture, as mine was just now, what will happen is the sacrum, the 
top of the sacrum, which is actually called the base. It's a little bit confusing, but it's because it's the, the widest part of the bone here. What happens is that will come in this direction. So whilst the lumbar spine forward bends like this, it opens out at the joint between the lumbar spine and the sacrum. And so the sacrum will go in that direction. If I show you in the side view, it will go in that direction and the tailbone will end up tucking under. And because of the relative immobility of these sacroiliac joints, what will happen is that the, these iliac bones will also do that. And you can see that what will happen is if the iliac bones are doing that, then the sit bones here are going to go in that direction. So you are going to be ending up sitting on this point of the sit bones. Now we can explore this activity in the sit bones, particularly if you go to sit on a chair. Um, now I'm not going to do that now because um, uh, it will, it will, it's awkward for setting that up on the camera as well. But even just here, if I put my fingers underneath my sit bones, and then what I do is I rock my pelvis back and forwards. Now you'll see even in the side view, see how easy it is for me to rock my pelvis backwards. So I, I can do that. But because I'm on the floor, there's very little room for me to come onto the front edge of the sitting room. And this in itself tells me that I need to be sitting on a block. Because when we want to sit in stillness, for yoga, for meditation, for pranayama. We need to have the ability for there to be a natural um, response of the body to the movement of the diaphragm and the other actions of breathing. And if we kind of sort of stuck back in this position here, not only will the diaphragm be able to have its full excursion, down into the belly, but also all of our body, we don't have this ability for this dynamic ebb and flow in all directions because we're kind of stuck. So this tells me that I need to sit me. If I just show you there, so I come into a backward facing curve, you see how easy that is. So I come into a backward facing curve on the lumbar spine and the whole of my pelvis has rolled backwards along with uh, that movement of the sacrum, or the base of the sacrum, uh, goes backwards, the tailbone comes into the body, and we compare that to the other way. And you can see that I'm actually even struggling to come up to a flat back that. So as soon as we come onto a block, I'm going to come onto the tall butterfly there, exactly the same, put my hands underneath, you can see there, I've got all that room to go backwards. And now look what happens. You see how much more room I've now got to come forwards. So I've now changed something. So what has changed? Well, you'll see that the relationship between the knees is not as um, has changed compared to before. So that relatively speaking, my knees have come down compared to the hips. However, they are still above the hips. Now let's see what happens if I cross my legs and I bring the knees well below my hips. The tall butterfly is a little bit tall for me, okay, but I'm just using it for demonstration. You see how, why it's too tall for me because I'm actually now coming into a little bit of a hypernordosis there and I feel like I'm falling off it. But you can see how much ability I've now got to come onto the front edge of the sit bones because of this changed relationship with my knees compared to the hips. And then coming back in the other way, I've still got the same movement coming back in the other way because I'm able to roll all the way onto the back of the sit bones there. Now, when I come on to the standard butterfly, and you see I don't really have to make any effort whatsoever, I've now come into a natural backward facing curve. My knees are 
just below the height of my hips. They're close to the floor. And you can see that I've got um, all of the curves in place without even really having to think about it. I've also got what we call a plumb line, which goes through the side of the ear, through the shoulder tip and down and is in line with the side of the hip there. This means that my sitting is effortless and that's what we're looking for when we're in meditation. So going back through those points um, for yourself, if you come into your sitting position, you want to look at how high your knees are off the floor. You then want to look at the relationship between your knees and your hips. And then you come up to the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, the middle part of the back there across the shoulder blades and the bra strap level, and then up to the neck. And you also can have a look at what the jaw is doing. You want to make sure that the chin is not jutted forward here, which would suggest that you've got an over um, lordosis in the neck, the backward facing curve there, and you've actually short, you're shortening all the way through the back of the neck there, instead of having nice length. So when you look at those things, you can start to really build a picture of what your spine is doing, what the lower limbs are doing, and they will actually inform you as to what your pelvis is doing. And um, then what that means is you can sort out the foundation, you sort out in particular the relationship of your knees to your hips and your knees to the floor. Um, they're kind of a little bit all part and parcel of the same thing. So depending on what you are, are sitting on, what, what height of support you need, you will see how well your hips open, how close your knees then fall to the floor. So have a look at these and see whether it helps. Um, it's always uh, one of those things that, you know, when you're used to talking about this, which obviously I am, um, sometimes we can, we can miss uh, points which are not so obvious to you. So if you've got questions, go ahead and write them in the comments below. I will get back to you. And um, if I feel that it's something that I can really uh, add to there, then what I can do is I can pop that into another video for you. Um, please do like and subscribe to my channel as well. Uh, this is um, um, uh, this will be great uh, because I'd like to really build up my subscribers there and certainly be responding to the questions that you have. So I hope that that's been helpful and I look forward to seeing you again next time.